Hey everybody, Mark Bates here, uh, and today I'm very excited to introduce you to a new project I've been working on for quite some time now. Uh, it's called Packager, and what it is is a tool to embed static files in Go binaries. Now this is a proposed replacement for the Go Buffalo Packer tool. It's my hope that eventually this project will move under the Go Buffalo umbrella um, and that others will step up to maintain Packer for those who still rely on it. Um, however, I do think that this is a uh, better solution and I'm going to show you uh, kind of why. We're going to walk through a bunch of examples with standard OS, um, Packer, and Packager um, and try to show you the difference between them all. So let's start with the standard library. Um, and let's start with the most fundamental thing um, that we need to do when we talk about files, and that's open a file. Um, in the standard library, we do this by using the OS package um, that the standard library provides. And on that, there's an open method. We give it a path to a file, um, and what we get back, hopefully, is the file. Otherwise, we'll get some sort of an error. Uh, we can go through and we can stat the file. Um, and when we stat that, what we get back is an interface called os.fileinfo that contains information about the file, like its name, its size, its, mo its mode, um, you know, uh, whether it's 0755 or 0666, uh, that sort of mode, uh, or its mod time, what time uh, it was last modified on disk. Uh, and then we can print it out. So if I were to um, do kind of go run star.go on this here, um, you can see that it does print off um, all that information for me. It prints off index.html because that's the file we want to look at. The size, which is 257. It's mode. Uh, it's mod time, which was apparently um, October 30th uh, at 9 a.m. looks like. Uh, and then finally, it's contents here. So all of that prints off very well. Um, that's how we open a file. That's how we get information about a file using the standard library. So now let's look at the same thing, but this time in Packer. Um, as you can see here with Packer, we first have to open up and create a new box uh, and tell it uh, which directory we want to use. Uh, then we can tell it, uh, ask it to find us uh, a file, in this case index.html, and this is going to return back some bytes and we can write this out. Um, so this works, and this has been working for quite some time, How? Um, but if you haven't noticed, there is a lot of information that is gone. Uh, we can't stat this file. Uh, we can't ask for the size of this file, when it was last modified, or its mode, um, amongst the other things. You can ask uh, a real file using the standard uh, library. Uh, and because of this, Packer is what is uh, what I like to refer to as a lossy for format, much like MP3 versus WAV. Uh, if you remember MP3s, they were a lossy musical format. They provided a decent enough sound experience, but they weren't uh, whole. They would lose bits of information along the way to make it a small format. And because of that, it was an acceptable quality. Well, Packer is kind of the same way. Uh, Packer uh, strips away and loses all of this information um, and becomes a lossy format, much like MP3s. Now, this is a problem because this information is very, very useful and very, very vital. Um, and because of that, uh, there are a lot of bugs in Packer around this subject, around uh, the, the the information not being there, around not having the correct pathing and information, HTTP not working because uh, of this loss of information. Um, so I knew that any tool we we had to look at had to uh, address this. Um, so it, we didn't want to lose any more information. Um, so Packager was designed around this uh, to make sure that we don't lose uh, all of this great metadata that uh, we have at our fingertips and that is useful and vital for implementing uh, better features and more features uh, and more stable code going forward. Um, so, with that said, we wanted to make sure, like I said, we, we didn't lose that information, and we also wanted to make sure um, that our API was more idiomatic. Um, so if you look at the API here of Packer, uh, you can see this is not idiomatic. This looks nothing like the API uh, usage of the standard library. Um, so not only is it lossless, but it's not idiomatic. It's a whole new format that people have to learn. So um, when designing Packager, that was another major concern. We wanted to make sure we had an idiomatic idiomatic uh, API. And so I turn to the standard library for that API. So let's now open up Packager, um, the same example, but this time in Packager. Here we go. Um, and as you can see, 
these two code examples are almost completely identical. Um, and as a matter of fact, if I just move my cursor over here, uh, they are very close to identical indeed. They're both 21 lines of code long. Um, and at first glance, they look almost the same. There are two major differences in this code, however, uh, and that is instead of using os.open, we're using packager. Dot open and packagers is just the top level package um, of this new library that I'm demonstrating here. Um, and then we call open on it just like we did the standard library. The difference is our path uh, is no longer a relative path. Um, so if we look at the standard library example, we're doing a dot slash public index, and the dot says kind of here. Uh, and slash means you know everything under it. Um, now the problem we've had with Packer is that dot can move in a lot of varieties of different ways. And people who've tried to run these tools nested or pointing into a different directory or through testing sometimes have noticed that um, that moves. And so Packer has issues related around that. So again, this stable um, API for finding files was a key part of this. Um, so what we're doing instead, um, instead of relative pathing, and instead of having to create boxes and all this information, what we're going to do is we use the module root of your project as the file root. So in this example here, um, if I were to open up my tree here. So this is the application, uh, the packager application. And here is my go mod file for that application. And that is inside this packager directory here. Um, so when packager runs and it sees this slash public, it's going to interpret that as the root of this module, where that go.mod file is, that's where that root of this file path begins. Uh, and that brings us to our first important uh, thing I wanted to talk about, which is uh, Packager it requires modules. It's built on modules. It uses a lot of technology um, that modules and the Go tooling offer to make sure it can accurately find packages uh, anywhere on your system, make sure it always has the necessary uh, information uh, as well. And therefore, we can make very accurate and deterministic um, outcomes in terms of pathing as well as what we pack into the final binary. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit of that uh, in a minute here. So if we know that the slash public index HTML is at this go root, um, that's it. We've changed from os.open to packager.open and we've re removed that period that made it a relative path. And instead, we've gone with this forward slash uh, Linux-esque path where the beginning of the file path is the root of the go mod file. And so if we look, here is that uh, same application here. And I'm just going to do go run uh, star.go on it. We haven't done any packaging or whatever, um, but we can see that we're still getting that same information back, right? Index.html, 257 is the size, the read write mode, uh, the mod time of October 30th uh, at 9 a.m. There, so, and of course, the file information itself. So it's behaving as it does um, when we run it through the standard operate, uh, through the standard library. Uh, so that's important. That means we're getting back the same information time and time again, and you can trust that. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to run, uh, actually, before I do that, let's uh, make this a little bit bigger. Um, plus 10, there we go. And I am going to run one of the packer packager tools on it. I'm going to run packager list. And what packager list is going to do is it's going to parse this application and tell me what files it expects to package into the final binary. So in this case here, um, it says that it's looking at this app module um, and it's going to package the public uh, index.html file uh, into it. And it's only going to package that one file because that is the only file that we are using. Um, so packager, when it parses um, and we can actually look at the parse information as well here um, goes through and here we go um, looks through all of your go files for certain declarations such as packager open packager walk packager stat uh, and a few others um, and then it goes through and it finds those um, and determines their path and here is those 
declaration. So in this case, we had a, an open declaration with a value of public index uh, HTML in this file at this position. Um, and that file eventually gets bubbled up to a point where it's the only, it gets packaged into our final binary. So when we talk about the tooling here, that's another part of this story. Um, we're trying to make sure that the tooling is open and transparent and can help people find this information. So for example, if you have issues and a bug in your Packager app, you can run Packager parse, just like I did, and find out all the different places it thinks it's finding this information. Uh, and you can paste that into a ticket. Um, you can do Packager list and see which files it's expecting to package into your final binary. Um, but finally, of course, we wanna actually just package this stuff into the binary itself. And to do that, we can use the Packager command. There we go. And when we do that, it's going to dump those files um, into the files that we just saw with packager list into this packaged.go file. And if I open that up here and we look at it, you can see this is the entire file. And inside of it is one big file blob, uh, one big, sorry, one big byte uh, slice inside of this. And what this represents is everything that this application needs to fulfill the file and open kind of interfaces that we know with the standard library, right? So what we'd expect to see if we were to run this in, say, a closed environment such as Docker, which is what we're going to do in a second here, uh, is we want to make sure we have all that information. All that information is bundled here into this one file. Uh, and we also just bundle everything together in one blob now versus Packager, uh, sorry, versus Packer, where you would have all these individual lines listed out and the file itself was very, very big. So here we compress and gzip and encode the entirety of all of the files needed for your app as well as their file information and other pertinent metadata uh, into this little blob here. Um, and so now it is ready to go and we can use it wherever we need. So uh, I have a little make file here and I will show you what that make file looks like. And all of the examples have this little make file. Uh, and all it does is it run, runs the packager tool to generate that package.go file, uh, builds it for Linux, um, then runs it through a Docker container um, and kind of prints it and kind of runs it inside that Docker container. And if we look at the Docker file, here we go, you can see it's just an Alpine container, so super empty. We're just copying the bin in um, and that is all we have. And then we're just executing the binary. Um, so if I run make on this, what we should see is that same metadata and body printed out. And here we go. Um, we could see index.html, size 257, the mode, the mod time, as well as uh, the contents of the file itself inside of Docker, um, completely self-contained within the binary. And this is just something that is not uh, simply possible with Packer um, because of its lossy format, right? We don't have all the size and mode information that in, in Packer, but Packager does have all of that information. So let's now look at uh, walking. Um, this is a very simple example where we're gonna walk the public directory print off all of the file information uh, into a nice tab writer. So if I were to, oops, not do that, <laughs> and run this example, we would see this is the output, right? So we have public 128, images 128, their sizes, uh, the sizes of the images are 27,000 there, the index HTML, as we've seen before, uh, 257. So to do the same thing inside of Packer, um, again, we replace the, instead of file path dot walk call this time, uh, with a packager dot walk call. Um, and of course, um, we're using the slash, we're removing that dot because we want to talk to the root of the module. That's where these, the root of this file system is for this application. Um, and so if we go down and run this, run this example, I'm going to, and if, again, we see we don't have a packaged Go file, so I'm going to run go run star.go. And we get the same outputs that we had before. Uh, again, not 
packaged up, not bundled, just off the local file system. So we're matching the local file system. Um, but if we run that nice little make script, which packages this up, puts it into the Docker container and run it, you can see that inside the Docker container, we get back the same exact information uh, again. So the packager looks at this application. And again, if we ask it to uh, do, if we do uh, make this a little bit bigger, there we go. If we ask it to parse, we can see we have a walk parse on this line here. And that's what we've got inside their application. But if we do packager list, it shows us that it's going to pack the public directory, the images directory, image one, image two, and index HTML. And it's doing that because when it looks, when the packager tool goes through and performs its static analysis on your Go files. Uh, and that's how it works. It goes through and walks the AST. Um, so while these uh, look like strings here, um, they're actually not. Uh, well, they are strings, obviously. Um, but what they can't be is dynamic values. Uh, and that's because the static analysis tools that Go provides can't determine runtime values. It can't figure out functions, what have you. Um, so you can use anything you want as long as it's a string for now and obviously you know prs are welcome for that and i really would love uh more help with the parser uh and making that um more versatile and better and can do you know obviously uh resolve uh issues better so uh anyway with that said again all we've changed the packager uh instead of file walk file path dot walk packager dot walk uh, and instead of the dot slash public we're just doing slash public um so that is uh, an example here where we can see that Packager sees that it's slash public. Uh, when the tool runs, it says, okay, this is slash public. It's public slash public is a directory. So if we're going to walk a public directory, we're going to need all of the files underneath it. So the tool is smart enough to understand that. You don't actually have to explicitly set that out. So finally, let's look at um, HTTP because that's always something that a uh, packer has had trouble with uh, from time to time. For example, serving index.html files. Um, so let's look at how the standard library would handle this. Um, and so in the standard library, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we need an HTTP file server. Uh, and to do that, we ask, we get an HTTP.dir um, and we give it the name of the directory, the path to the directory we want to serve up on disk. Um, and so then we just pass that to listen and serve, and that will serve that directory on port 3000. Uh, now, how do we do the same thing? And of course, if we show this, if I go down to um, here and I do go run star.go, and we'll open up one 27 3000. There we go. This is the standard library. Um, rendering this page. And this is the index.html file and it's serving an image and saying hello. And we can look through the images directory here. Um, and that's uh, the two images we have. We can click on them uh, and we can see them. They're the same image. Um, might go for avatar, of course. So to modify uh, the standard OS version to work with Packager, uh, once again, instead of doing HTTP.dir, we're gonna do Packager.dir. Um, and again, instead of dot slash public, we're just gonna do public. Um, and this is going to give us the same um, kind of information that we had uh, with the standard library. It's gonna have the same exact output. It's gonna work and behave identically. Um, so let me just, raise this up here we go fantastic um, and now i'm going to run my little make script here and again this is going to compile this it's going to package it all run it put it in docker so if i do go back to 127 now this is hitting docker uh, and you can see it's still giving me the index.html it's serving up the image correctly if i go to images i get the same folder system uh, as well well, everybody, that's my quick tour of the Packager tool. Um, I really uh, would highly encourage everybody to try and use it, please. Um, obviously, open PRs, open issues. Um, 
open up discussion around the project itself. Uh, I think this uh, is the way to move forward with the way we deal with static file embedding uh, and the way we deal with these files kind of overall in general here. Um, so please take some time, play with it. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, and that's it for now. I hope this helps. This video was brought to you by Gopher Guides. If you are an organization, conference, or user group looking for Go training, please visit goforguides.com. For more great videos like this one, please visit goforguides.tv.